I'm not holding back on this one. It goes without saying that Under the Sea is a legendary song. Despite its simple premise, its fun use of wordplay and immensely catchy sound have made it one of Disney's signature songs. Even winning them an Oscar and Golden Globe in 1989 and a Grammy in 1991. Disclaimer, I don't think the Grammys are actually worth anything, but that's still pretty cool. Of course, that means it had to be gutted for a live action remake eventually. Of all the songs on this soundtrack, Under the Sea had the least business getting the soul drained out of it. When they redid Part of Your World, they at least tried to actually do something different with it, for better or worse. For Under the Sea, it's basically the same thing but with the life surgically removed. You could even tell by the very start of the song. In the original, the start of the song has a couple layers to it. It starts with the xylophone, then the iconic steel drums come in. Ariel, listen to me. Life under the sea is- Underneath this is another layer of sharp, miscellaneous percussion to give the song some texture and a bit of flute. The bass flares a couple of times as well to establish itself and add another emphasis to the beat. Life under the sea is better than anything they got up there. This use of instrumental variety helped set the scene of the colorful and diverse world that Ariel and Sebastian live in. In the remake, the steel drums come in immediately and they sound far more muted for some reason. Okay, okay, listen to me. The human world is a mess. Most of that miscellaneous percussion is also missing, and I can't hear a flute at all. They also forgot that Sebastian's narration in the original was on beat. David Diggs doesn't take this into account at all, probably because the producers didn't either. Why would rhythm matter? It's not like this is a song in a musical or anything. Listen to me. The human world, it's a mess. Okay, okay, listen to me. The human world is a mess. Do you see how these little things could be the difference between greatness and mediocrity? Obviously, you're allowed to switch things up for the remake, but if you're going to do that, at least make it as good as the original, you know? The opening notes of a song can really set the stage, but for the remake, all I hear are those muted steel drums that really aren't bringing out a mood of any sort. It's missing the punch that makes the original instantly recognizable, and instead is just using the melody because we're familiar with it, and they think they don't have to do anything else. Another thing that's missing from the instrumentals in the first verse is a strummed electric guitar in the background. Can you hear it in the original? The seaweed is always greener in somebody else's lake. It's got a very 80s or reggae sound to it. It helps add a rhythm to the mix. In the remake, this and parts of the percussion are missing. It's just the steel drum, xylophone, bass, and maracas, which makes the first verse sound like it's just being backed by a loop rather than a full composition. The seaweed is always greener in somebody else's lake. There's the occasional flair, but it doesn't do much to break up the monotony. The xylophone is also now in a similar register to the steel drum, so it doesn't even stand out, making the whole thing sound flat. You dream about going up there, but that is a big mistake. I think Diggs even goes off key. Listen to when he says big mistake. Big mistake. The song is in B flat, but that might be an E, which is not a note in the scale of B flat. I'm not very good at discerning notes, so someone in the comments let me know. The chorus also removes key instruments to the composition. The horns and guitar are completely absent. Under the sea, under the sea, under the sea, under the sea. The xylophone continues to be buried in the mix, and the bass is weirdly loud because there's so little layered over it. Darling, it's better. Don't wear his sweater. Take it from me. There's nothing to differentiate the instrumentals of the verse from the chorus. It drains the energy away. Diggs doesn't even give a convincing performance either. He sounds rather disinterested, as opposed to the original, where Samuel E. Wright is fully in character. He's exaggerating lines and emotions to convince Ariel to stay where she is. Like every other song in the movie, the singer's performance is there to help tell the story. But again, that's not important to the remake, because you recognize the lyrics and the melody, and that's enough to get you to buy the ticket. In the second verse, other sea creatures chime in to join Sebastian's performance. After all, he's the conductor, that's what he does. But that's not realistic, I guess, so the shrimp and fish that join in are both absent. Down here, all the fish is happy, as off through the waves they roll. Is that also off key? Oh my god. This takes away color from the world and makes the ocean feel less alive. Instead, we're simply given a shot of Ariel swimming with chattering dolphins because that's more realistic and we need realism in a movie about singing fish and mermaids. The remake also continues to use flat instrumentation, but in the middle of the second verse, strings are added. But fish in the boat is lucky, begging for a worse effect. This song is supposed to take influence from reggae and calypso. How do strings fit in? They feel tacked on, like they knew they needed another instrument but couldn't think of what else to add. The strings continue into the second chorus, and they sound just as out of place. The sea. The sea. They don't have the same punch that the horns and guitar did. The sea. 
under the sea. It makes the song feel weirdly dramatic considering the circumstances. Then the most obviously wrong part of the song comes in. Ariel sings along. In the original, it was the other sea creatures that sang along. Ariel doesn't care for the ocean. Why would she be the one singing along and celebrating what she doesn't want? Yes, Hallie sounds nice, but it narratively doesn't make any sense, and these songs are part of the narrative. They're meant to give us insight into these characters, so being contradictory for the sake of sounding nice goes against the whole point of the concept of a musical number. As an aside, can we take a moment to appreciate this line? Only Howard Ashman could think of a rhyme like that. What a legend. It's just a shame we can't get visuals of the sea creatures playing instruments because that isn't realistic anymore. It's one of the big things lost in the transition from animation to live action. In an animated film, something like a sturgeon picking up coral and playing it like a clarinet is just another visual to enjoy. In a live action film, though, it would probably look uncanny. Still, they could have figured something out with their gigantic budget, but they honed in on realism and it absolutely drains the magic from the song. The next part of the song is when Sebastian lists all the different animals and the instruments they play, and that's kept word for word in the remake, but there's no visuals to accompany it. They also remove the little bits of instruments that you hear as the animals play them. Instead, we just get Ariel and Sebastian sitting on turtles. They couldn't even be bothered to show the animals Sebastian is talking about. When he says fluke, it shows a manatee, and when he lists the other animals, it just shows a bunch of starfish dancing. The only visual that actually makes sense with the lyrics is this one. What's extra weird is that sometimes it doesn't mind showing animals dancing in unrealistic ways, so that just makes me wonder why it's not like that for the whole song. The instrumental break is also a lot longer, stretching on for a whole minute as opposed to the 20 second break the original had. That's almost as long as the instrumental break in the Broadway version, and that had a whole dance number to go with it. I'm not going to judge the instrumental break too much because by this point it's just another interpretation of the song, but it does bother me that we finally get the horns here where they were completely absent from everywhere else they needed to be beforehand. <laughs> Now we get into the final chorus of the song. I wouldn't say the remake did it poorly, but I felt like it left a lot to be desired. Ariel comes back in with the singing, which is still so weird to me because by this point in the original, she's literally left the scene entirely. She's also replacing the background vocals of the other fish that sing along. Again, that helped the ocean feel more alive, like it was an entire community singing to Ariel, not just one crab. In the remake, the strings continue to feel out of place, and David Diggs honestly doesn't sound too enthusiastic. In fact, he's completely drowned out at times. Compare his performance to how excited Wright sounded in the original. Something I did find interesting is that the remake took a cue from the Broadway version and briefly stopped the instrumentals on this line. We got the hot crustacean band! Yeah. Hot the the sand. We got the hot the band! Each of the plan has Can we also point out how enthusiastic Ariel looks in the remake at that line? Like, she's not supposed to be enjoying this. She doesn't even want to be here. Why is she so into it? Anyway, the rest of the song plays out, and it really is just missing that energy. Listen to these parts back to back. It sounds a lot less like a proper breakdown in the remake, like I could expect that song to just keep going. The build-up to the end also feels a lot less prominent because it's just continuing the same instrumentals as before with a layer of quiet choir slapped on top. The strings here would actually do a decent job at replacing the synth from the original that helped make the build-up feel so big. But the strings in the remake aren't prominent enough to fill that gap. The horns are also far more muted in the mix. When it all concludes on the final note, the remake just doesn't feel as earned, so to speak. On the whole, Under the Sea is a brilliant song, but it wasn't just the incredible lyrics that brought it to life. It was also the instantly recognizable, carefully balanced instrumentation and memorable visuals. 
the remake's version feels like a cheap knockoff, where it feels similar but you know something is missing. Disney is convinced at this point that they could take the bare bones of any of their famous songs and expect it to sell. It worked for the first couple of remakes, but The Little Mermaid 2023 was a huge financial loss because audiences are just getting tired of this trick. Sure, it's fun to see a new take on a song you love, but not if that new take is just a stripped down version of the original. I'm not trying to bash on this version just because it's different, I'm disappointed because it didn't take any opportunities to make something of itself. Alright, that's gonna be my last video on this movie, at least for the time being. And this is just what I thought about the song. What did you think? Let me know in the comments down below. And until next time, I hope you have a wonderful day and take care of yourself.